Bball 3710 do you think if you can post an edited five-ish minute video that explains MMTLP and a call to action, we could show it to representatives? If it's terrible idea, then ignore. Um, no. I mean, I don't know if it can really be explained in five minutes. I keep trying to figure out how to do this in a shorter thing. And I guess, you know, Marius, if you're watching, let's see if we can, we can cut something out here. Okay. So. MMTLP started out as an oil company called Torchlight. Torchlight was a fledgling uh, startup, had has oil leases in uh, West Texas called in the Oregon, Oregon Grande Basin, called, called the University Lands. It's owned by the University of Texas. They lease the oil rights and they want like, hey, we got hundreds of thousands of acres here. We think there's millions, maybe billions of barrels of oil. Let's raise some money and get some oil. So they tried raising some money, get some oil, and they immediately found themselves in like a death spiral. They're getting, getting short attacked. Then COVID hits and uh, no one uses fuel. No one's flying. Stuff's not getting shipped. Cars aren't being driven to work. And oil prices absolutely collapse. And when they collapse, uh, uh, oil prices go negative. So people start shorting the company like crazy. So in 2020, I think their, their low was around 21 cents a share. They're facing being delisted by the NASDAQ. And so uh, a Canadian tech company uh, came along and was like, hey, Let's merge and uh, we'll sell off your oil assets. You'll become part of this tech company. The shares will become tech company shares and everything will be cool. And the oil company's like, well, what else can we do? We're, getting, we're, we're, we're either going to run, run out of money and lose these leases or uh, we could become part of this tech company. So become part of the tech company. And the agreement is they merge. All the shareholders get uh, shares of the tech company. And they also get this preferred share, which is symbolizes ownership in the assets that are the oil fields. And the idea was they're going to sell off the oil fields for pennies or whatever, uh, give everyone a dollar or two dividend, and then peace, we're not a tech company. In that time, oil prices skyrocketed. Uh, February of last year, they had hit $130 a barrel. They're still pretty high right now, between 70 to 100. That's where they seem to be fluctuating. Uh, and the oil fields are worth a boatload. Um, also in that time, uh, this preferred share, which was never supposed to trade, was just supposed to sit people's accounts and wait for, uh, uh, wait for, uh, the sale and then give people a cash dividend all of a sudden started trading again, illegally. Uh, the filing said, do not trade. And then two market makers decided to, uh, make a market. They sent some letters to the FDA, F, F, uh, to FINRA saying, Hey, we're going to make a market for this. FINRA went cool with us and they started trading it uh, against the wishes of, of the company. The company sent some letters and some angry notes to FINRA saying, hey man, this is supposed to trade. FINRA's like, eh, too late. It's trading. Oh well. Tough shit. And it appeared that th these two market makers forged documents in order to make it trade. So that's right there, screwed up alone. So anyway, it trades and trades and trades and trades. Uh, the summer of this past year, um, uh, they decide they're going to take the company private, just remove it entirely from the market so that it cannot trade anymore. And uh, they filed S1 with uh, the SEC. SEC said, pretty good, fix these things, submit it again. They fix those things, submit it again. Pretty good, fix these other things, submit it again. Fix those other things, submit it again. And they're like, okay, now it's been like four months and your financials need to be updated. So update your financials and then we'll prove it. So they updated their financials in November, got approved in November. Uh, the company came out and said, okay, we are going to make these oil assets private in a new company called Nextbridge. We're going to spin it off in its own private company, uh, unrelated to the Canadian tech company. And um, trading will cease after close on the 12th, which will be the date of record. And on the 14th, we will issue the paper shares to replace all these electronic shares and the company will no longer trade. And then they went to FINRA and said, hey, FINRA, Time to issue a corporate action because we've got like three weeks. Time's of the essence of issue corporate action so the brokers know what they're supposed to do. Come on, FINRA. Come on. Come on, FINRA. Let's do it. Come on. Come on. You can do it, boy. Come on. Come on, FINRA. Be good, FINRA, and do it. And FINRA took two and a half weeks. And on the 6th of December, they issued a corporate action saying, hey, man, this thing's not going to trade anymore, bro. Ticker's going to be deleted. Actually, I think it said canceled in that one. Ticker's going to be canceled on the 12th. So, uh, you know, do what you do. And then two days later, they went, oops, <laughs> we meant deleted, not canceled. Sorry, bro. Uh, and then they said, oh, uh, if 
anyone who buys after the 8th can't be guaranteed their shares because of T plus 2. You got two days to settle everything. And if the date of record is the 12th, you know, just be warned. Which brokers already knew about, and they're already planning on doing position close only, which means no new positions will be opened. Only positions closing would be, would be allowed. So that it wouldn't be a problem with that whole T plus 2 thing. And then at midnight, before trading began the 9th, FINRA pulled out their hair, had a big panic, and went, oh, stop everything. You can't trade this thing because what? Whoa, whoa, oh, there's an unforeseen of, uh, event coming. And uh, extraordinary event. And they stopped trading. Everyone went, what the? What do you mean unseen ex extraordinary event? Um, and FINRA wouldn't answer them. And so no trading happened. The stock stopped, stopped uh, well, got deleted, you know, 12th, 13th supposedly, and uh, the 14th next British shares. In the meantime, a lawsuit was filed. Since then, a couple more lawsuits, all alleging that FINRA was doing the bidding of short hedge firms that did not want to, hedge funds that did not want to uh, close their positions. Because you really can't have short positions on a company that doesn't trade. It's kind of impossible. Uh, and a lot of it was naked positions. And so those naked positions require the, lo the be able to locate shares that exist that are tradable. And if the shares aren't tradable, you can't locate. So how are you supposed to have short positions on this? Um, in that lawsuit, FINRA said, ah, well, we, the, the extraordinary event was we're going to have problems with settlement if we allowed two more days of trading to happen, even though no new positions were going to open. So they're already wrong there. Uh, and two... There have been problems with settlement because there's so many fake shares in existence that very few can get access to their shares. So FINRA screwed everything up by A, allowing it to trade, and B, stopping it from trading before it should have stopped trading. So they've caused problems on both ends of this entire thing. Um, and right now we're in limbo. Will we be allowed to have a couple more days of trading where, where short positions will be forced to close? Or will we just be in this limbo forever? That's kind of where we are. Uh, this is the type of stuff that happens when regulators don't do their jobs properly. Uh, it never should have traded. FINRA was okay with that. It never should have stopped trading after it traded. FINRA was okay with that. So, uh, yeah, extraordinary event was Godzilla and he no-showed like a punk. Typical Godzilla, not showing up on time. Get that boy a really large Rolex. <laughs> so, uh, that's, I don't know if that was five minutes or not. I wasn't keeping track of time. That's where we are. That's as concise of a timeline as I can make. Um, we're hoping for the, that the lawsuit gets an answer from a judge. They've got to make a ruling at some point. Uh, I think it's, they have to make some sort of acknowledgement after 90 days, like, we are considering, and then it kind of resets the clock again. But uh, they can, the judge really has a prerogative to take their time, so we might be waiting a while. <sighs>